Today when you get your piece of paper, the first thing you're going to be doing is writing your name on the back. On the other side, you're going to be drawing your horizon line. Your horizon line can be similar to Vincent van Gogh's. You can show little hills at the bottom or kind of make it your own. I'm going to put a little bit of a wavy line for my horizon line. And then you're going to start painting the sky. For the sky, you're going to be getting turquoise. You're going to be getting blue. And you're going to be getting white. My white is a little bit mixed right now, but it's still going to work to tint my colors. So that's just fine. And I'm going to start painting the sky. Just like Van Gogh, I'm going to use a lot of brush strokes and texture in my sky. And my paper is quite a bit smaller than yours, so I'm going to be filling it in a little bit more quickly than you will. Your larger paper will take a little more time. And I'm just going to do some swirls and some little dashes. Then I'm going to rinse out my brush, clean my brush, and dry it on a paper towel to keep that brush dry. And I'm going to add a little bit of white. As I use the white, it's going to lighten my turquoise, and I'll be creating my first tint. Remember that you're going to have light tints, medium tints, and areas where you haven't tinted at all. I want to see a variety of values in your picture. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. And right now I already have a few values showing in my sky. I'm going to move on to the blue. And this blue I'm going to build right in those open spaces. And I can let the blue mix with the turquoise and the white. Put it side by side. And eventually have that whole space filled in. I'm going to move back to a little bit more turquoise. And then I'll add some more white to mix in with my blue. So I can have a variation, a variety of tints in my picture. So one last tint with white, right on top of that blue, until your sky is complete. When you're done with your sky, make sure that pretty much all of that white space is filled and try to make sure that you have that sky going all the way down to your horizon line so that pencil line gets filled in. Once you're done with this, I'll be passing out green paint and black paint. Once everybody's done with your sky colors, the lids can be placed back on the containers and they can be set aside on your tray. And then we're going to be focusing on shades. The sky, we use tints. The ground, we're going to be using shades of green. And this is going to have a little less texture. We don't want to distract from the buildings that we'll be gluing on later. So I'm going to put this down with kind of just a more even brush coat. And after I add a little bit of green, I can again clean my brush, dab it off, and add a tiny bit of black. For this part, it's just about the size of a fly. Black is a very strong color and it alters the color, it changes the color really, really quickly. So I'm going to go in and on the screen it almost looks black. I'll hold this up for you in a minute and you'll be able to see that it's actually just a dark green. Sometimes the color on the screen looks a little bit different, but it's actually just a dark green. And I'm going to go back in and add some more green. I can go back and forth with my colors. Just so I have a variety. I can have some really dark green. I can have some plain green that hasn't been changed at all. And then I can have some in between where there's an even smaller amount of black added. Until the whole ground area is filled in. And then the next time we get together, we'll be cutting out stars for the sky, and we'll be cutting out a moon for the sky, and move on to our village after that. <laughs>